Good morning and welcome to a special Mother's Day service. Happy Mother's Day to all of our mothers and I hope you are honored all day long. Um, a few announcements is we continue to have our confirmation classes Mondays and Thursdays through the Zoom link, 4.30 to 5.30, and we're working our way through the Old Testament. We also continue to have our Bible studies on Thursdays at 10 o'clock. Uh, right now we are studying Romans, and this week will be Romans chapters 3 and 4. Please call Pat if you'd like to join us, and she can send you a Zoom link. I uh, also want everyone to know that, yes, our rummage sale had to get postponed, but not canceled. Uh, please keep uh, all those things that you've accumulated with all of your cleaning. We can take some things in our junior chapel, so please keep that in mind, and we'll let you know the date of that as soon as possible. Um, this coming week is a special birthday for someone very special to us, Pat Hagenson. Please wish her a happy birthday if you get a chance. Uh, also, thank you to all of you that have come by Zion and have done some of the weeding and yard work. Um, thank you so much. We're going to be having a weed party today with some of our youth, so we hope to get some more things done. But there are plenty of weeds and plenty of spaces, so no problem keeping our six feet. Feel free to come and weed anytime. Thank you all very much. Uh, lastly, just, just a little humor. What is the most uh, unuseful thing that you have purchased in 2020? A pocket planner, a planner of any kind. <laughs> Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O oh God, for the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all the water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be the given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. This is the prayer of the day. God, we thank you for your love and your grace so abundant so overflowing that you receive us in spite of our fear. As you encourage the first Christians to witness during these trying times, encourage us to follow your call, to care for our neighbor. Grant us peace in the midst of these challenges and fill us with your Holy Spirit through the risen Christ. Amen. The first Bible reading for the fifth Sunday in Easter is from Acts chapter 7. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God in Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. 
Responsive reading is from Psalm 31, beginning at the first verse. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I command my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord. Look, God of truth. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Blessed be the Lord, for he has wondrously shown his steadfast love to me when I was beset in a city under siege. I had said in my alarm, I am driven far from your sight. But you heard my supplications when I cried out to you for help. Love the Lord, all you his saints. The Lord preserves the faithful, but abundantly repays the one who acts haughtily. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all of you who wait for the Lord. Our second Bible reading for the fifth Sunday in Easter comes from 1 Peter, chapter 2. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight, and like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer special sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Rejoice, 
This morning's reading is from the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Jesus said to the disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there, or all the people who have helped make a positive experience in a child. I want to acknowledge the grandparents and the great-grandparents and the foster parents and the godparents and the aunts and uncles and teachers and mentors. Thank you for taking time to love on a child. Happy Mother's Day. I also wanted to share a special thing that my husband did, which I thought was just a lot of fun. Uh, he gave me the gift of Gino's East Pizza all the way from Chicago. And shockingly, in this time where uh, prime Amazon shipping of two days is now about two months, we were able to get Gino Z's pizza delivered to our home. And it was just a really fun thing, and it was very unique, and it just kind of gave us something to look forward to. And so as I think about it, I can think of many states we've lived in, and maybe it's something we get to still look at. And so I'm throwing that idea out back to my husband. But anyway, just something to think about. I, it was fun to look forward to something um, that I never would have thought could happen. So anyway, I hope all is well. Happy Mother's Day again. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Gospel lesson today comes from what is known as the Farewell Discourse. Jesus speaks these words after he washes the disciples' feet and after the Last Supper. And with only a few hours before Jesus is betrayed and arrested, he is with the disciples in the eleventh hour, and there is no time left. And yet Philip, one of his disciples, says, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus replied, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you do still, and you do not know me? 
I wonder how Jesus said this. I wonder if it was a voice of shock. How could someone who had seen so much suddenly waver in doubt? Or did Jesus say this knowingly? Jesus knew that these disciples, that they weren't quite, he knew that they weren't quite ready for the rest of the story. Overall, we do not know a lot about the disciple Philip. He does not get a lot of airtime throughout the synoptic gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. However, in the book of John, Philip plays a role at the beginning of the gospel. In John chapter 1, verses 43 through 46, we meet Philip. Here is the beginning of his story. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee, and he found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. So Philip really was the very first evangelist. He was the first one to tell the good news about Jesus Christ. And Philip understood that Jesus was the one to fulfill the scriptures. Philip had seen the feeding of the 5,000. He had witnessed miracles. He had performed miracles himself. And he had just had his feet washed by Jesus' own hands. But here Philip sits with Jesus in the 11th hour and says, Jesus, show us the Father. In other words, he is saying, Jesus, show us one more thing. Show us one more sign. Do one more miraculous thing. I do not know if in the 11th hour these disciples were getting awfully nervous. They must have been feeling the tension, and maybe that was making them act differently. I mean, you have Philip who is asking yet for another sign, and Thomas who ends up needing Jesus to show him the holes in his hands. You have Peter who was given the keys to the kingdom of heaven and ends up denying Jesus three times. I think it was the pressure or the tension, but suddenly they are very human. Or maybe in the three years that they follow Jesus around witnessing miracle after miracle after miracle, Maybe at the end of the day, they just could not get there. They just could not believe without seeing for themselves the next part. I'm sure the tension is very high at this point. And when you're in an intensive situation, your emotions are not necessarily steady and even keel. And I'm sure we can all relate to that today. Most people I talk to today have had good days and bad days. And some people say they have had mostly good days, and others have said they have had mostly bad days. But there's not a lot, but there is a recognition that life is not what it was, and it's not normal now, and neither are our emotions. When I was doing a bit of research on this text, I picked up a commentary that I have not read in a little while. And I was struck by where my bookmark was. It was on March 29th, 2020. And the text was the Valley of the Dry Bones. That was just two weeks into our time with the coronavirus stay-at-home order. And I think if we heard that text now, we would really relate to it. I was struck by the commentary that was in this book. It said, the theme from the valley filled with dry bones in Ezekiel, focuses on experiences of loss and death in the hope of new life in God. We feel dried up, devoid of breath, aching from the loss of loved ones. But death and loss do not have the final word. We worship a God who brings new life and new visions. We place our hope in a God who has power even over death. What have we to fear? It's a calming text. 
In the middle of an intense coronavirus time, that commentary has a calming nature to it. But we do have a lot to fear these days, of course. Not everyone feels that way. But many are experiencing fear, and many are experiencing fear responses. Maybe Philip was just feeling that same type of fear that some of us are feeling, and rightfully so. The crucifixion was right around the corner. The disciples who thought they were steady followers of Jesus were suddenly allowing doubts to slip in. Suddenly, their humanness is permeating the amazing three-year experience that was filled with spiritual experiences and miracles. And isn't that who we are? Aren't we human beings having a spiritual experience? Or are we spiritual beings having a human experience? Either way, sometimes even though we try to be strong, even though we try to lean on every ounce of faith that we have, sometimes our humanness gets the best of us and our emotions spill forth. And maybe we sit and we ask for just one more sign. These days it might be looking for a sign that says open. And others are still needing a sign that says still closed. And we have our doubts and we have our fears. And we are the same people who have witnessed miracles in our own lives and then turn and ask God why. At the end of the day, we may be left with more questions and answers, more down days than up. But that does not mean we do not have faith. We need to just take a great big giant breath. And we need to tell ourselves it's okay to have our human experiences in the middle of this pandemic where we do not know which way is up and which way to go. But we remember that we are also spiritual beings. And we stand on our faith in the best way we can. The, th the thing is, in this story, Philip, Thomas, Peter, right before Jesus was crucified, showed their fragileness. Perhaps they reached their breaking point. Jesus, overall, goes to the cross alone. His friends scattered. And the amazing part is that Jesus was resurrected, and one of the very first things he did was go visit the very same friends who just could not get through that last part without breaking down, without showing fear. He redeems them because he loves them, and Jesus loves you too, even on your most fragile days. And none of this is easy, and some of this is really hard. But we continue as a community of spiritual beings having a heck of a human experience. Human experiences come with human emotions. That is why we need Jesus. We need our faith. Because Jesus has seen all of this before. He knows our fears, and he knows our breaking points. He knows that we might be fragile now, even if we were strong before. And then just when you think you cannot deal with this anymore, suddenly something comes and lifts your spirits up out of that coronavirus despair, like a beautiful sunny day, or a warm breeze, or birds chirping, or just a moment of stillness that is unlike any other. Jesus is in that moment. He is holding you up and not letting you go. And he's letting you know that he is there. And he reminds you that it's going to be OK. He says to you, I am with you always until the very end of the age. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Happy Mother's Day.
please join me in expressing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Passing the peace, sharing the peace. Sharing or passing the peace is the announcement of grace we give to each other. When you look someone in the eye or extend your hand, or in these difficult times, make the sign of the heart with your hands and say, the peace of Christ be with you, we are giving to each other exactly what Christ said because Jesus Christ is present. Passing the peace serves as a bridge between the liturgy of the word and the sharing of the meal. On this day, blessings to you all. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. And blessings on all your, you who care and support one another. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you.
Healing God, we lift up the sick and infected. God, heal and help. Sustain bodies and spirits. Contain the spread of infection. For those with mental health challenges who feel isolated, anxious, and helpless, God, provide them every necessary support. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Protecting God, we pray for our vulnerable populations. Protect and keep them safe. For the young and the strong, God, give them the necessary caution to keep them from unwittingly spreading this disease. Inspire them to help. For frontline healthcare workers and researchers, we thank you for their vocational call to serve us. God, keep them and their families safe and healthy. Help them to stay clear-minded in the midst of the surrounding panic and give them compassion for every patient in their care. Provide for their needs mentally, physically, emotionally, and spiritually as they continuously battle this disease. Lord, in your mercy. God of wisdom, provide for our local, state, and federal governments. Help our elected officials discern the right course through unknown territory. Bring collaboration and unity as they make important decisions and allocate help and resources to combat this pandemic. For our scientific community, leading the charge to understand the disease and communicate its gravity, God give them knowledge, wisdom, and a persuasive voice. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Providing God, we lift up the homeless, unable to practice the protocols of social distancing in the shelter system. Protect them from disease and provide isolation shelters in every city. Provide for the poor, especially the uninsured. For workers in a variety of industries facing layoffs and financial hardship, God give them, God keep them from panic and lead others to help and support them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of creativity, provide resources and new ideas for families with young children at home for their foreseeable future. God, we ask for help for parents and caretakers, for patience and creativity. For single mothers and fathers, grow their networks of support. For parents who cannot stay home from work but must find childcare for their children. God, provide administrators and teachers everywhere innovative ways to bring important milestones to the students. Help and guide all educators and students in this time of transition. For pastors and church leaders faced with the challenges of social distancing, God, help them to creatively imagine how to pastor and lead with inspiration and support. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you a favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
One of the greatest joys of my life was being a mother. And I respect every person who ever was a mother or a grandmother. Um, when we sang, I love to tell the story. It was one of my mother's favorite songs. And I always think of her when we sing it. Um, happy Mother's Day to everyone at Zion, all the mothers, and uh, I hope that you have a wonderful day. Happy Mother's Day and peace be with all of you. Have a safe Mother's Day, even if it, at, even if it will be at a distance from your family, but I hope everyone stays safe and has a wonderful day. Again, happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers and grandmothers and caregivers. Hope you enjoy your day. Find ways to reach out to each other, however you can best do that. Please remember, if you have a neighbor or someone close that's a mother or grandmother that isn't going to have a chance to be with loved ones today, uh, to give them a special thought, maybe a special call, and uh, for them to also enjoy their day. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Whether you're a mother or a child, we all celebrate this day. And blessings also to all of you who share your love and care with others. Make this a great day. I'd like to wish mothers everywhere a special Mother's Day wish for this year. I miss you at Zion more than you can imagine. You are family to me. I miss my family. I miss worshiping with my family. I miss making music with my team and my choir. I miss making music with the congregation and praying and worshiping. I look forward to the day when we can all join together again and raise our voices. I wish you all are having a wonderful Mother's Day. I miss you and I hope to see you soon again. I miss every Sunday seeing all the mothers in church, saying hello to them, shaking hands. So again, I really miss all of you and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers in our congregation and all over the world. Amen. Steve and I miss all of you, and we want to wish you and everyone in your family and in your life a happy Mother's Day. Hi, this is Gary Ritter, and I want to wish all the mothers who are at home and watching this a happy Mother's Day. I'm remembering my mom who died 20 years ago next month and thinking what a lucky person I was to have a mother who loved me and who worked so hard to make our life good. Luckily I had a good father too, but for mothers there's no greater blessing that we can ask for than to have a loving mother. And also please stay safe and take care of yourselves. I'll look forward to playing the services for all of us when we get back together and can celebrate the resurrection. Beloved people of Zion, we miss you. We can't wait to have you back as a congregation and worship together. God's blessings to all of you and peace to all of you in this beautiful spring. Just letting you all know that you're very missed. I miss worshiping with all of you, but you are loved and prayed for. And I look forward to the day when we're all together in the sanctuary, worshiping as a community. Until then, have a wonderful Mother's Day, and may God bless all of you. Christ has risen, just as he said. Go in peace. Share the good news. Christ is risen. Alleluia.